On the evening of June 3, 2014, two major explosions and subsequently a fire occurred at Shell Mordike Petrochemical Plant. The explosions could be heard within a 20 kilometer radius. Debris from the explosion was found 800 meters away. Two employees were injured in the explosion. The Dutch Safety Board has investigated this accident. At the plant in Moordijk, Shell produces chemicals from oil and gas. In this installation, ethane and benzene are used to produce styrene monomer and propylene oxide. These products are used in styrofoam, food, cosmetics and pharmaceuticals. In May 2014, this part of the MSPO2 plant was closed for scheduled maintenance. The main purpose of this pit stop was to replace the catalyst pellets in two reactors with a new type. The catalyst pellets plus heat accelerate the reaction of fluids and gas that are mixed in the reactor. Evenly spreading of liquids across the catalyst pellets is essential to dissipate heat from this reaction. Located below the two reactors are separation vessels which separate fluids and gases. Excess gases are vented to the exhaust gas system. At 8.15 on the evening of June 3rd, operations started to allow circulation of ethyl benzene and nitrogen in the unit as part of the startup procedure. After 45 minutes of stable circulation, the operators began at 8.56 heating the unit up to its operating temperature. They noticed ethyl benzene fluctuations in the separation vessels and in the flow to the second reactor. At 9 p.m., the operators felt that the reactors were not warming up fast enough. They manually increased the heating of the ethyl benzene. This caused the temperature to rise above normal levels. However, operations did not intervene, as fluctuations in both fluid and temperature levels were quite common during startup. The Dutch Safety Board has concluded Shell considered fluctuations of this kind during startup to be quite common. In the course of the last 35 years, Shell did not always systematically examine the impact of plant modifications and replacements based on a risk analysis. Shell, as well as the regulators, failed to identify this. Secondly, important information known at the time of the unit's design was lost and thus not available for its eventual management. Because this loss went unrecognized, risks arose which Shell Mordike failed to control. At around 1016, an automatic protection system was triggered that was designed to prevent liquid from entering the exhaust gas system. When the flow to the second reactor is reduced, the fluid level in the second separation vessel drops, but the valve remains closed. As a result, the gases in the system could no longer be released either. At 10.48, both the pressure and temperature had risen above the maximum level. The new catalyst pellets caused unexpected reactions. The high pressure reduced the flow of ethyl benzene through the reactor, and therefore heat from these reactions could not dissipate. The heat buildup causes hot spots that accelerate new reactions, a so-called runaway. The pressure rose very fast, too fast for the emergency relief valves. In two minutes, the pressure in reactor two rises to 180 bar, more than 25 times the normal pressure during startup. The increased pressure causes reactor two to explode followed 20 seconds later by the separation vessel of Reactor 1. The ethyl benzene starts a raging local fire. The explosion and the hot burning catalyst pellets cause two people working opposite the unit to sustain bruising and second degree burns. The Dutch Safety Board concludes that Shell Netherlands incorrectly regarded ethyl benzene as a safe substance for warming up the reactor the reaction with the new catalyst pellets was unexpected. 
Despite the fact that critical process boundaries were breached when the reactors were warmed up, the operators failed to realize they should abort. Shell has not learned enough from past incidents in their own plants. The Dutch Safety Board recommends that Royal Dutch Shell ensure that all Shell employees are constantly aware of the safety risks arising from modifications made to plants, processes and procedures. Evaluate how risk analyses are performed and implement changes. Communicate process-related knowledge and lessons learned from actual and near incidents in an organized fashion to employees charged with managing safety risks. Ensure that investigations into actual and near incidents also provide insight into the underlying causes.